Hi, I'm Kurt Fry. In this video, I would like to show you how to start working with shapes in Microsoft Excel. I have started a blank workbook, so there's nothing to download. And instead, I can just start by creating the shapes that I need. You might be tempted to go to the Draw tab, but in fact, if I click, you can see that's used for ink. And you would get that either with your finger on a touch screen or a stylus or a pen. Instead, you want to go to the Insert tab of the ribbon. And then here we have in the Illustrations group, Shapes. So I'll click there and you get a selection of shapes to use. Recently used shapes, if you haven't done them before, are actually just the most popular, and you can go down through the other groups to see what's available. I'll start by clicking a boring old rectangle, which I tend to use a lot. When I move my mouse pointer over the grid in the worksheet, you can see that I have a narrow crosshair. And if I hold down the left mouse button and draw, then I get my shape using the default format. When I release the left mouse button, the shape remains selected and Excel displays the shape format contextual tab of the ribbon. So from here, I can do a lot of work with the shape. It's still selected, and if I want to apply a different built-in style, then I can go to the shape styles group, click the down arrow for the quick styles gallery, and select a style that has already been created. In this case, I will go for the dark green accent color three, so I'll click there, and it's been applied. If I want to take more control over the contents and appearance of my shape, then I can use the other controls in the Shape Styles group. The Shape Fill control will let me assign a color. If I click the button itself, then it uses the default color, basically whatever appears in the bar underneath the paint can. If I click the shape fill down arrow, then I can select from other colors. So instead of orange, let's go with a light blue. I can also change the shape outline color. So again, it's currently a medium to dark blue. If I click shape outline, then I can change it to a different color. For contrast, let's make it red. And when I click away, the effect is much easier to see. To add text to a shape, all you need to do is click it and then start typing. You don't need to double click to open a text box or anything. So the shape is selected and I will type number 43. So that's there and a period. And there are a couple of ways that I can format the text in the dialog box. I can select some or all the text. So I'll do that right now and I have the shortcut menu that appears with a limited number of options. So I can increase the font size. So I'll make it 18 and I can also center it within the body of the shape. To do a vertical or middle placement, I need to go to the home tab of the ribbon so if the shape's still selected and the text selected as well, go to Home. Then in the Alignment group, I will click Middle Align. And when I click Away, it's easier to see that the text has been both centered and middle aligned within the shape. So that's one, but you can work with multiple shapes at the same time. I'll go back up to Insert and click Shapes. This time I'll do a circle and move the mouse pointer over my worksheet. And from here, I will demonstrate how you can either draw an ellipse. So this isn't actually a circle control, it's an ellipse control. So there is the ellipse shape. However, if I hold down the shift key and start dragging, then it does become a circle. If I were to use a rectangle, then I would draw a square, but instead I'm now drawing a circle. So I'll let go of the left mouse button, and there is my shape. And I'll type more text in the middle, just so it's easier to see. And I'll do number 19. Then I'll click the border around the shape so everything is selected. And this also allows me to work with either the shape for formatting or the text. So I'll go back up to home, 
and I'll increase the size of the text. And once again, I will center and middle align. Go back in and edit the text. I'll actually make it a bit wider and I'll hold down shift again so it's a circle. There we go. So we have number 43 and number 19. One interesting thing about Excel and other Microsoft Office programs is that we actually have a number of layers. So the circle exists at a higher layer than the square with number 43 in it. And I'll show you what that means. So I'll move the circle over the square. And because the circle is at a higher layer or level, it blocks out the square behind it. With the circle selected, if I go up to the Shape Format contextual tab on the ribbon, I can move it behind the square. So if I go to the Arrange group, I have the Send Backward button. I can either click that, or if I click the down arrow, I can send it backward. Or if I had more than two, I could send it all the way to the back. I'll just click Send Backward, and when I click away, the square is now in front of the circle. You can also change the alignment and grouping of shapes. So I'll drag the circle away a little bit, and I will make it so that it's a little bit below the middle of the square. But what I want to do is to have them lined up so their middles are together. In other words, they will look properly aligned horizontally. So I have the circle selected. I'll hold down the Shift key and click the square. And then again, on the Shape Format Contextual tab, in the Arrange group, I will click the Align Control or button. And here, I can select how to align them. In this case, I'll click Align Middle. And the two shapes have been shifted so that now their middle lines, their horizontal centers, in other words, are lined up. And you can do the same thing vertically. If you want to treat multiple shapes as a group, then you can select them as I've already done. And then again, in the arrange group, click group, click group. And the two shapes are now considered to be one unit. So if I drag either of them, they both go along because again, they are considered part of the same shape or group of shapes. If you want to separate them, you can select the group as I've done here, go back up to group, click ungroup, and they are now separate entities within the workbook. So those are some of the basics of working with shapes in Microsoft Excel. I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, please like it and subscribe to my channel.